In nuclear medicine, unsealed radioactive sources are used for diagnostics and therapy. Employees regularly handling beta emitters and PET nuclides are subjected to an increased radiation exposure. The purpose of radiological protection inside a unit handling radioactive substances is to apply organizational and technical measures to ensure that neither employees nor the environment are exposed to unnecessary or inadmissible levels of radiation. In planning a nuclear medicine treatment or investigation, the dose for the organs to be treated or investigated must be established in advance and the activity to be administered determined accordingly. The purpose of establishing Diagnostic Reference Levels, or DRLs, is to give those in positions of responsibility a simple means to evaluate their own practice. DRLs are not to be understood as legal limits. However, if there is a significant difference between the administered activity and the DRL, the licensee has a duty to optimize the situation if it is impossible to provide a valid explanation for the difference. Jobs involving unsealed radioactive sources are carried out in isotope laboratories or application rooms inside the controlled area. These are indicated with the yellow radiological hazard warning symbol. All employees who regularly work inside the controlled area are considered to be occupationally exposed to radiation and the dose they accumulate must be measured with a personal dosimeter. An extremity dosimeter must, as much as possible, be worn where the highest dose is to be expected. An important precondition for optimum radiation safety is the reliability and safety of all the devices used for the examination as well as of the radiation meters. Regular consistency checks offer an assurance that any malfunctions and deviations that may occur can be noticed in good time and rectified. The best protection against radiation entails, firstly, keeping as far away from the radiation source as possible, and secondly, minimizing as much as possible the time spent in the immediate vicinity of radiation sources. The distance law states that there is a quadratic relationship between the distance and the dose rate. In other words, if the distance is doubled, the dose rate is reduced to one quarter. The use of tongs, grippers, and tweezers increases the distance between the hands and the radiation source. Optimum preparation of the workplace and training in work procedures using inactive substances may reduce the exposure time and hence the radiation exposure. Contrary to the widely held view, the time factor is of only secondary importance, provided the shielding is good. It is when preparing radiopharmaceuticals that the exposure risk for the hands is particularly high. The most effective measure of radiological protection is the use of shielding and tools that increase the distance from the radioactive source. Additional shielding made of plexiglass can further reduce the exposure in the case of beta emitters. It is important to make sure that such measures do not have the effect of slowing down the jobs which need to be done. Gloves must be worn at all times, whatever form of manipulation is to be carried out. Nitrile or vinyl gloves provide better protection against contamination than latex ones. Loading the syringe must be done inside a container with shielding on all sides. 
Furthermore, syringe shields that are suitable for pet nuclides should be used in order to minimize the dose to extremities and the ambient dose rate. Where there are large numbers of patients to be treated, it makes sense to use automated equipment for this dose-intensive stage in the work. Before application, the activity must be determined with a dose calibrator. For the correct determination of the activity in the dose calibrator, it is generally necessary to remove the syringe shielding first. In this respect, short transfer distances make it easier to achieve a dose-optimized manipulation. Before leaving the work area, people and objects must be checked for contamination. Employees who handle unsealed radioactive sources regularly must be monitored for ingestion by means of a screening procedure. People working in clinics where these treatments and examinations are carried out can do these simple ingestion checks themselves. They are performed on the stomach when technetium 99M is used and on the thyroid when radioactive iodine is handled. For other nuclides, the ingestion check is performed by determining the activity in the urine. Manipulations of the application device should be performed quickly. And if the device is filled with radioactive material or is contaminated, tweezers should be used if possible. If it takes several minutes to complete the injection, the distance from the unshielded parts of the injection device must be increased during the pauses in the injection procedure. It is also possible to use auxiliary application tools as a means of reducing extremity doses. It is possible to reduce significantly the extremity doses due to beta emitters by wearing lead-lined rubber gloves. When using such ancillary items, it is important for them to be simple to handle and for them to allow the application to be made over the shortest distance possible. The controlled area of an iodine therapy unit includes the patient's room, the sanitary installations used by the patients, and the preparation, application and storage rooms. It is essential to comply with radiological protection measures when nursing patients and before their discharge, when cleaning the rooms and releasing contaminated everyday objects, such as bed clothing and bathroom linen or dishware, to ensure that the employees, the environment and the patient's relatives are not endangered by ionizing radiation. Floors, walls and fixtures must be easy to decontaminate. As a general rule, the only patients treated are those who are not likely to need intensive nursing and care during their inpatient stay. The iodine therapy capsule is given to the patient in the treatment room under the supervision of the responsible doctor. It must always be assumed that there is an increased risk of contamination in the treatment room. Before entering it, overshoes and protective gloves are always put on. The time spent nursing and caring for the patients should be minimized as much as possible. If longer jobs need to be carried out in the ward in the course of the patient's stay, mobile shields must be set up in order to reduce the radiation exposure and any existing shielding walls inside the ward must be used to the full. If it appears that it may be necessary to spend a longer period of time in this area, the radiation safety officer must be consulted beforehand. Any treatment rooms that do not have artificial ventilation must be thoroughly aired every day in order to minimize the increase in air contamination and the danger of inhalation by the employees. When leaving the controlled area, the employees' hands and shoes are to be checked for contamination using a personnel monitor. 
after contact with the patient, or after doing cleaning work, the work clothes must be checked for any possible contamination. The patient's dishware and food leftovers can be considerably contaminated, and these must be measured before they're released and confirmed as being below the contamination clearance levels. If the contamination is higher than the clearance level, the dishware must be stored or washed inside the controlled area. If disposable dishware is used, this must be handled like radioactive waste. All the wastewater originating in the controlled area of the treatment ward must be collected in an installation where it can be checked and must be measured or calculated to be within the authorized activity level before being released to the sewage system. Patients can be discharged only when the dose rate at a distance of one meter from them is less than five microsieverts per hour. The time of their discharge and the dose rate measured must be recorded in an accompanying document and handed to the patient. Following either outpatient or inpatient treatment, the patient must be given a set of written rules to ensure that neither their family members nor third parties are exposed to unnecessary radiation. Patients suffering from severe incontinence may sometimes need to be kept in hospital until such time as the relevant activities of radioactive substances have been excreted. Personal items which the patient has used during the treatment must be measured to confirm that they are free from radiation before discharge, and if necessary, must be stored temporarily inside the controlled area until such time as their radiation has fallen below the clearance limit. Once the patient has been discharged, the treatment rooms must be checked for contamination by a person with the necessary expertise. Objects such as dishware, cutlery, mattresses, blankets, and pillows must be placed in temporary storage until their radiation levels fall below the clearance limit. Contamination affecting fixtures, installations, floors, and walls must be eliminated as thoroughly as is feasible. In order to facilitate decontamination, special detergents, protective paper, or adhesive film can be used. Cleaners working in controlled areas must be instructed and supervised by the radiation safety officer. To summarize, the following steps are recommended. Prepare the workplace in advance so that jobs can be completed as quickly as possible. Practice job sequences regularly. Test radiation meters with regular consistency checks. Always bear the distance law in mind. Always wear the appropriate dosimeters. Work with tongs, tweezers, and any other ancillary implement that will extend the distance from the radioactive source. Use suitable syringe shields. Wear lead-lined rubber gloves whenever performing lengthier manipulations with beta emitters. Do not spend more time than is necessary in nursing and caring for the patients. Ventilate treatment wards regularly. Contamination checks must be performed before leaving the controlled area. Personal items can become contaminated and these must be measured and confirmed to be contamination free before discharge. Fixtures, installations and floors must be decontaminated as thoroughly as is feasible following the patient's discharge. After cleaning, the cleaning materials must be measured and confirmed to be contamination free 
or if disposable materials are used, these must be handled like radioactive waste.